Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Tutorials. And in this video, we're going to be writing our second chart, which is going to be a bar graph. Now we're going to do this one from scratch to see how much that we remembered about writing our first chart. So let's get going on that now. Okay, so to go along with the challenge that I presented you in the last video, I want you to experiment here. Now we had let line chart equal new chart. Now what we're going to do is sort of experiment this a little bit. I'm going to leave this get element by ID grabbing the line chart, even though it's no longer going to be a line chart. I just don't feel like changing all that. We can change this though to bar, uh, bar chart. Okay, and we have this in here, let bar chart equal new chart, which is a good start because that's the way we had it before. Now, you may have remembered in our previous chart, if you kept that open, that we needed some things here, one of which is a type. Now the type, if you could have guessed, is just bar, considering the type of the other one was just line. So we're pretty close, right? We got type. And we have bar, you probably could have guessed that. Okay, so what else do we have in the last one? Well, we had a data, which didn't just straight up accept data, it was actually an object that accepted a few things. Now these options included one of which was a property called data sets. So we had inside of here data, and this is not in camel case, data sets. And data sets was equal to an array of objects. And inside of here, we had an actual data property where we had an array of some data. Let's check this out. Let's give this some, some numbers here, 10, 20, switch it up with 55 and then back down to 30. Okay. So at this bare minimum now we have a type we have a data with data sets with data and we have our draw and we have our chart that's being attached to an a uh, canvas item. Let's go ahead and check this out to see if this worked. This is how I like to learn new things. I I come in and I just try what I think is going to work and if it doesn't work then I go from there, okay? So now we can refresh and you can see cannot read property length of undefined. Now, we might be wondering what exactly that is. Well, you could scroll down here and you could check this out and sort of see what it's looking for, but I sort of already have an idea of what it's looking for lengthwise. Now, remember we had an issue where we had labels and if we didn't have the right number of labels, the right number of data wasn't showing up. So let's come back up top here to our data above data sets and let's add a labels, okay? Now labels, let's go ahead and have this be an array of strings and we're going to have four different strings in here. We can just keep the month theme going and just have January, February, okay. March, my favorite month and uh, April, okay. Super cool, now we need a comma, obviously because this is an object. And let's go ahead and refresh our page here. And now obviously we're getting the same error. Now, I had a theory, and I still believe that theory is right. I spelled labels, labless, uh, so obviously that wasn't correct. I'm going to fix that spelling. Now I'm going to check it out, refresh, and as you can see, we now have a chart. So remember in the last time we just copied and pasted all of that information, and it sort of just seemed like a whole lot of stuff. Well, this is the bare minimum we need to have the chart showing up. And if we were to change this to type line, I'm going to spell it correctly, line, refresh, you can see it works too. And that's pretty darn amazing, right? Because all we did was change one thing and it completely changed the look of this graph. We didn't have to change anything else. We didn't have to change any of our data, any of this other structure and this object. So, so as you can see here, this is the bare minimum of information that we need. And from this point, anything else that we want to add to this, we can do so uh, just simply by looking at the doc. So for instance, if we want to add a label to this particular data, we can do so with this and say numbers per month. Okay, as you know, it makes sense. And then we can add a border color. So we can say border color. 
and the border color can be an RGBA or it can be a hex value. So if we wanted to go super ugly, we could do 00FF00 and get this really awesome hideous green color and come in and refresh. And now what's interesting here is that we don't have a border yet. So even though we've defined a border color, it's showing up in our key, but not in our actual chart itself. So of course we want to come back and we want to give this a border width. And this is the great part about experimenting with this stuff is that you really sort of, you say, okay, well maybe a border width will work or border color. You can come back, check it out. And your association with what's going to work and what's not going to work is no longer copying and pasting things out of the documentation, which is very good, but it's more or less knowing the information now. Now, another thing you'll notice is that our 10 down here, uh, our lowest item does not show up because it's 10 and that's the lowest. I, I really don't like that. Let's go ahead and in the last video, we showed you global config. Now let's say we wanted to go ahead and add this as begin at zero. Now we could add it as an option, but I see that we're adding this as an option and we will be quite frequently because honestly, I like the begins at zero. So let's go ahead and set a global begin at zero. We can do so. We can find it within charts.defaults.global. And then we can look at instead of animation here, we can have this be scales dot y axis dot ticks dot begin at zero and we can set this to true let's see if this worked again i'm all about exploring here now as you can see this didn't work because we can't find property of undefined, which means that charts.global.scales is not a thing. Let's go ahead and comment this line out and we can console.log and paste in the charts.defaults.global and see what actually exists in here. Obviously we could look in the docs, but let's go ahead and just explore this animation or this object right here. And we could see we have tooltips, title, on click, legend, hover, elements. Uh, we have a whole bunch of stuff, but we don't have anything to do with scales. Let's go ahead and actually drill up a little bit. We can come back in here and say charts.defaults, okay? And refresh. Now here's something that's interesting. We have charts.scale, and let's open up charts.scale. And we have charts.ticks, and we have ticks begin at zero. So if you don't want to head to the docs, you can always just come in and council log this object and drill down here and see that what we really want is charts.defaults.scale.ticks. And if we refresh this, we'll now see that we have begin at zero as an option set to false. So what we want to do, let's go ahead and uncomment this out charts dot defaults. Now we want to have this be dot scale, get rid of y axis dot ticks, begin at zero equals to true, save this thing. Let's check it out. And as you can see, just like magic, we've set this default and we did so without exploring the documentation, but really just exploring the configuration object here. So this is super duper cool. We now have a bar chart and this has a nice fancy little growing animation that's taking the default 1000 milliseconds. If we want to go ahead and change this fill color, we can, maybe let's, and so if we want to go ahead and change this fill color, we can try to do that as well. That way it's not sort of gray and neon green. Let's say we want a complete neon green bar. How do we go about that? Well, you might think we need a background color and you'll notice these follow CSS fairly closely, right? Background color, border color, border width. These are all just the same things except for in camel case rather than hyphenated, uh, what could be called kebab case. Now I'm going to set this background color to neon green, refresh, and we have this fantastic neon green, awesome 
chart here. So this is why I love chart.js. It's intuitive, it's easy, and you can sort of guess your way through it. And if you need to check out the documentation, the docs are awesome. So as you can see here, we now have a neon green bar chart. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about the next type of chart, which is a radar chart. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, if you comment on the video, hit me up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. If you want to purchase this series, there's going to be extra content, including uh, we're going to show you how to make some really super cool, nice looking charts. I'm going to have a whole bunch of defaults that are going to be available for anyone who purchase is the series. So it's going to be some nice extras there for you. You'll be able to just drop in some configuration options and have some really super cool looking charts. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, if you comment in the video, hit me up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.